This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law 30A, Section 18, this meeting of the uh, Finance Committee is being conducted by a remote participation. Uh, I just want to share with everybody that, um, at least as of today's uh, meeting, that this is a special meeting of the town council. There's no public comment for the public. Uh, there's no period for public comment during this meeting. Uh, we welcome public comment and uh, at future meetings of the finance committee that we're gonna be holding remotely, we will have public comment, but um, this being the first meeting um, in this format, it was not, uh, advisable for us to try and do that today. However, we really welcome your thoughts and questions about anything that the Finance Committee is working on. And you'll see right now on the screen, my address, uh, email address, Steinberg, A at Amherst, ma .gov, and uh, strongly encourage um, public comment, and it will be shared with the entire committee. So, um, Having uh, said that, I will uh, then go back to where I was before and um, turn off the uh, shared screen for the moment and uh, we can uh, start working through our way through the agenda. Um, I want to uh, just introduce everybody uh, to make sure that um, everybody knows who are currently members of the Finance Committee and to allow our minute taker to uh, be able to assure that there is attendance. So I'll just go down the list and uh, Kathy Shane, you're with us? Yes, I am. And uh, Dorothy Pam? You want to just unmute and say and uh, acknowledge your participation. Dorothy, you have to use your space bar, you can do it easy. Oh, just once? Okay. Hold the space bar down. Hold the space bar down while you talk, and it works the same way. Uh, Lynn Griesmer. Lynn, are you with us? Present. Okay, Pat Angelus. I'm I'm here. And I'm Andy Steinberg, chair of the committee. Then we have three members um, who are resident non-voting members: Bob Hegner. I'm here. Sharon Povinelli. Sharon. Well, Sharon was here, and she can she may be joining us again in a few minutes. She's here, uh, she's just muted. And uh, Mary Lou Talman. You're participating by phone. Sharon Povinelli is here, but she's may, may be muted. Okay, and Mary Lou? Yes. Okay, so everybody is present. So um, going then on to today's agenda, because this is uh, the first meeting that we've had of the committee in some time, and I really am glad that we're finally uh, back to the um, what we're what we're trying to do. And uh, the first agenda item that you can see on your screen is to review and comment on um, a document that was uh, prepared for the uh, council meeting of March thirtieth. In which and, we tried to. The screen is not showing for us. It is not showing. Okay, well, um, it should be, but uh, it's, I'm having trouble with my getting rid of other things on my screen. 
uh, let me go back to share if I can, or I'll, uh, we'll have uh, Athena be able to help us out too. Uh, I'll try one last time. Let's see if I can uh, find where it is. And I don't want to spend too much time on this for the agenda. Is the agenda now showing or not? No. Okay, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go on and I'll tell you, uh, so for Athena's sake, what I want to do is on the next document that I want to get on the screen is actually the item that we're going to be discussing um, itself, which is the um, standing committees um, chart the pages that have to do with the uh with the finance committee um so let's see if i can get we're that. up now now i'm up okay the agenda uh, is no the agenda i think that uh Tina put the agenda on so Athena, can you switch it over to the uh, standing committee's uh, report that was uh, there and then get us down to the page that shows the finance committee and we'll leave it on the screen as we talk about it so that people from the public can see what we're discussing. And this was a document that is available in the packet from the March 30th meeting and it identifies the goals of the finance committee as um, over the next uh, couple of months and things that we need to do. And I think that we all recognize that uh, developing an FY21 budget is gonna be a complex and different issue. And I wanna make sure that everybody on the committee has a chance to ask questions about the goals of the committee over the next uh, period of uh, probably two to three months and is able to find out any information that you need to know uh, that is going to help us to do the work that we do as we try and uh, develop an FY21 budget for um, which which is a requirement of the committee each year but it's going to be particularly difficult and different from prior years and I want to um, assure that the committee and by this meeting the public understands the complexity of the issues that we're facing because of changed circumstances that are um, just as a result of the current financial crisis resulting from the COVID-19 uh, budget crisis. So the um, goals of the committee are up on the screen to discuss and um, I know that there's uh, at least one gap in uh, where a sentence was left off on the next page, but I'm not gonna get to it now. But um, the five items that are on the screen, um, I wanna uh, just see if there are any questions or thoughts about those items as to their importance for the Finance Committee. Any thoughts? Okay, um, just to go on, um, then if, and please interrupt if you do. There's um, one of the things that I wanted to touch on a little bit further is um, the matter in the fourth box, uh, which is the regional school district process and how that fits in with the um, rest of the process. Um, as you recall last year, uh, what we did in, con in conformance with the charter and uh, just the reality of the timing was that the regional budget was being presented before the finance committee and the council were considering the budget as a whole for the rest of the town. Uh, this year, things are working on an unknown schedule 
because of the financial circumstances that we're in. The regional school district, um, the regional school committee is having a meeting tonight in which they're going to talk about the budget process. But um, do, uh, does everybody feel comfortable in understanding how the town meeting process in the other towns and the regional school district budget um, and our uh, budget process all fit together? If you need to raise your hand, please do. You want us to unmute and just say yes if we understand? Or if you have any, uh, if you have any thoughts or questions, please, uh, you know, feel free to do that, members of the committee. Two, um, Mary, Mary Lou and Dorothy have their hands up. Two hands up. Okay. Actually, that's uh, interestingly not appearing on my list. So, uh, Mary Lou, you had your hand up. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I'm just curious where you have in notes on timing for consideration. It says Amherst will need to, and there's nothing after that. Yeah, no, I realize that there's that problem, and that's exactly what I was referring to. Uh, when I, I, what we need to do is make adjustments to uh, be prepared to make adjustments to the process. Um, and uh, there are various reasons that we could uh, need to adjust the process, that being just one of them, if one of the town meetings rejects the proposed assessment method. I think that the reason that I listed that one is because last year there was a particular concern that that might happen in one of the towns. It did not happen and we all agreed to the the budget, uh, the regional budget process. Um, what is happening this year is that the um, other towns are rescheduling their um, meeting, their annual town meetings. All are in the process of either one having picked a date and the others working towards picking dates, but they are going to be later than usual which gives the regional school committee extra time to um, finally approve its budget, which is why it's only talking about process tonight, but will not be voting on the budget according to an email I received from the superintendent. Um, and uh, the, the budget, and Mary Lou can uh, give us the full explanation of this, the, the budget has to be ready um, for inclusion in the warrant with the first town meeting that's going to be scheduled of, of the towns that have town meetings. And uh, that's because the uh, uh, town finance committees uh, need to have that information available and needs to be out to the members of the public in those towns who are voters in town meeting. Uh, so we, when we know the date, we will then have to um, decide how we fit the regional school budget into our process. Does that make Follow sense? Up, Andy? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, one of the concerns would be, you know, it's all being postponed, but if one of the towns rejects the budget, then it has to go back <clears throat> to the school committee to rethink it and decide what they're going to do. And I wonder if Desi has set a date that that would have to be completed. Otherwise the commissioner sets the budget monthly. So I don't know how much latitude you have in time as you propose these deadlines, because it, 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 it could be a possibility that one of the towns would reject the budget. They have now, to if one town to rejects the to review it and then start again. Mary Lou, if one town rejects the budget, it still passes because I'm sorry, it's three I mean towns, the right? method. Yeah, but if one town rejects the method, then the method defaults to the uh, statutory method. Okay, so that's already established. Well, isn't that what the standard rule is? 
I haven't been on that assessment committee now for a couple of years. Yeah, no, I think that that's the way the statute works. Uh, it is a it is a complex uh, problem, and uh, see if I can explain it as best possible, because there is actually um, a separate state uh, statute that is working its way through the legislature having to do with what's going to happen in the regional school district if there's no budget by um, July 1. And um, what the legislation that was submitted by the governor and is working its way through the Joint Committee on Education provides is uh, for the, um, if there's no budget by July 1, that the commissioner can approve a one twelfth budget for each month until there's a budget that is finally adopted. So it default it goes to if that law passes, and I think some version of it is likely to pass for this year only. There is that special provision. The legislature has been working hard on trying to make sure that uh, there are provisions for each scenario that we might be concerned about. And uh, that's one of them. Uh, I think that the concern that I have is that, um, at least as of this time, the uh, legislation as it's working its way through committee is so far silent on the issue of assessment methodology assessment methodology makes a huge difference for Amherst uh, because uh, the, if when we were looking at the um, Fort Towns meeting results and the difference for Amherst between the 45% um, what was referred as the 45% of statutory solution that we all agreed to and the default methodology, which is 100% of statutory, the difference for Amherst is $180,000 based on the budget amount that was previous uh, that, that was previously discussed. And that's uh, for us even before this crisis um, has hit us is a uh, large difference. Does that answer your question as best I can, Mary Lewis? Or anything else? That's fine, thank you. And uh, I have to go back and look in the participant list and see if there's anybody else who wants to be recognized at this point. Um, Dorothy, you had your hand up, and Kathy. So Dorothy? Now I press the um, space bar. And keep it, keep it down, just Put keep down. pressing it. Oh, okay, all right, I just wanted to double check the order. Um, the school committee approves the budget. It comes to the finance committee. We approve the budget. We take it to town council. They approve the budget. Then it goes to the town meetings and they approve the budget, which is separate from the um, thing that we were just talking about, which is the method of payment, is it not? So aren't there two things that the other towns have to approve? One is the budget and two is how we're gonna pay for it? That is correct. And uh... Mary Lou had shepherded us through that in uh, the finance committee at town meetings and uh, now it's uh, on to us to do that, but they are two separate votes. The budget has to be approved by three towns out of four. And if it's approved by three towns out of four, it's binding on all four towns. The assessment method um, it becomes the state method unless an alternative method is approved by all four towns. And of course, in three of the towns, it is town meetings, in our town, it's the council. Don't forget to press your bar space bar if you wanna talk about using that method. So I say, thank you. Okay, uh, so Kathy. Okay, I have uh, two questions. Um, one is the school budget itself and i know you said they're meeting tonight uh i had been told that because of the union contract to the extent there needed to be layoffs any layoff notice would have to go out by april 1st um and that you and that's paul is shaking his head no so i don't know whether that's true or not in terms of layoffs for the fall so that's a 
you know, as a potential rather than we are telling you we're laying you off. Um, and then it's the second, which would go with that, if if we run into the issue of statutory budget and Amherst says we can't pay that amount, then does it have to go back to the school and the school has to live with a smaller budget in total? So the two questions. Um, the first is on the, if we needed a smaller staff to live within a smaller budget, did there have to be notices by April 1st or is there, was there not a deadline on that? Uh, I'm going to answer one question and then get back to the first question about uh, the notice that has to be given to um, teachers on uh, potential layoffs. Uh, the part that um, is uh, we, do, we would not have an option to, to say no once a budget is approved by three towns, it is binding on all four towns. And uh, if uh, one town is not uh, sad, not happy with it, it still has to figure a way to pay it. There is no choice. Um, and as far as the other, and, and I must and I actually should add to that, um, both for the committee and for the public, we have not had that happen in this region in, I don't think ever. And uh, the reason is that all of the towns work together and try and figure out a solution to um, avoid that from happening. Uh, we have four town meetings in which we uh, try and get together and make sure that we have a budget that is agreeable to the towns uh, the, the danger has come up with the assessment method because that has become an issue in one of the towns. And if it, um, it was rejected, it has the kind of large effect that we're talking about. Um, as far as the um, other question that you were asking, uh, the uh, most union contracts have a provision that if there's a possibility of layoffs, the teachers have to be notified of the possibility of layoffs um, before a date that is established within the agreement between the district and the union. And uh, if uh, the financial situation for the district or the town supporting the district is severe enough, it puts the district in a position where it has to uh, send that notification to the union. It doesn't mean that there are layoff notices necessarily, but it's notifying the union of possibility. Uh, Paul, you have some expertise in this. Did I state it correctly? Uh, thank you, Andy, you did. Um, so first off, I just want to make sure that people aren't sort of seizing the screen that <laughs> it seems like some people are trying to share screens and shouldn't. Um, so just make a caveat that what you said, Andy, is accurate that um, but we should recognize that they clearly the school administration and the union are in close contact with each other. So they understand what the situation is. Okay, and as I uh, um, anybody for, who wants to watch the school committee meeting tonight they are talking about budget process. I did ask uh, superintendent whether um, they were considering uh, some type of four town meeting either by uh, a remote meeting such as this or uh, an in-person if it's late enough that uh, it's um, acceptable to, to do an in-person meeting and it's an unknown at this point, um, that's part of the process that they might be discussing later. Um, so going back, as I don't see anyone else's hand up, but I may be missing it. So I just want to make sure before I go on. So do we, um, you said we can get back 
can you take us back to the chart uh, with the um, issues that um, are coming before the committee, the delayable? So, if you know what I mean. For this, from the March 30 council meeting. Okay, um, so we were on this before and uh, can you get back to it? Are there any other boxes that people, uh, that, that any members of the committee want to ask questions about um, on, on this page? The other thing that is required uh, is that we will have to have budget hearings. They are required by the charter. Um, other factors that are involved is that we need to um, come to a process ourselves that is essentially going to um, allow us to uh, figure out what the revenue likelihood is so that we can um, go back and restart the process is, if necessary to look at the allocations amongst the various major functional areas, schools, library, and municipal. Uh, we don't know that's necessary. We were hoping to get some insight today, but uh, the state was unable for technical reasons to hold the meeting that a lot of us had to hope to attend to. Uh, the information that I've been able to get is not entirely conclusive because while Tufts University did do a, a fairly good study on the issue and one that I can uh, add to the packet for this meeting rather than discuss it here, um, the, uh, there are unknowns even within that study because we don't know how much money is gonna be available from the federal uh, multi-trillion dollar package that would flow to the state and uh, so we don't, we, we the, the analysis was a, a very thorough study of the amount of lost revenue to the Commonwealth, but it, it would be offset by that. And it would also be offset by any legislative decision to use a portion of its rainy day funds. Um, and those are in topics that we were hoping for better insight into and that we need to get into, get answers to, so that the determination can be made of what our likely state aid is gonna be under the new circumstances. Um, so are there any questions about the revenue projection issue? Mary Lou has her hand up. Mary Lou? <laughs> under uh, the, um, let's see, the third item, consideration for the budget, I'd like to suggest that we give all of the departments an hour to present so that we get <clears throat> information about the department, uh, some of their needs, their concerns. Um, Andy, I think you were part of it when we started giving departments an hour, and it does give us <clears throat> a great deal of information. And the way you have a three or four weeks, um, and if you meet for three hours each of those times, uh, twice a week to, uh, you would have an opportunity to give each of the departments an hour to present. And also to uh, for us to ask questions. Um, so that would be under other notes. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, Paul and Sonia had given some consideration to how to proceed with that uh, before this whole crisis came up and had a schedule set up for the uh, finance committee and uh, we were going to uh, have, I, th I think that the goal was to have brief presentations from each of the departments. Uh, Paul? Yeah, so we were, we had a consolidated schedule. I mean, all that is out the window now because we don't know what the schedule is going to look like. Um, 
but we were, it wasn't going to be like it had in the past where they're going to be long, like each department gets an hour or anything like that. Um, because we did a lot of, uh, work on the budget as, as early on. And Sonia had done a lot of pre-work with it, all the department heads. Um, so but we had, we did have a time scheduled for all the major departments to be meet with the finance committee. Okay. Um, Bob has his hand up. Bob. Yeah. Yeah. I just, um, I'm just wondering since I know there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what the impacts of the a virus will be on the town and state budgets. But is the um, recession of 08 and 09 um, a good starting point to sort of say, hey, let's start here in terms of our thinking, and then you know we'll adjust that as we get more information? Um, welcome, Sonia and Paul, adding to this. You know, having been through the that experience, and I think that uh, Mary Lou is also involved at that time period. We uh, ha there were some differences. One was is that it worked its way out over a longer period of time. It didn't hit us in March because the um, crisis started uh, well before March, uh, as we know. I think it was September really when the major things began to happen. So that the budget year was going on um, on a more normal schedule with the uncertainty um, stringing out over a longer period of time. Uh, the other um, reality is, is that I, this recession appears to be a lot deeper. Um, and uh, we therefore really haven't yet scope what the um, reality um, is. Um, so I'm not sure how much the um, it, it, it matters. Mary Lou, did you have some thought on it? Uh, not particularly, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. no anybody, um, Dorothy, you had your hand up and then Kathy. So I had a question. Um, if this would be similar to the uh, budget crisis in New York City in the 1970s, would have this sudden um, oil boycott um, in on the whole time when New York City had just stopped everything? Um, it was it was took us a long time to get out of it. Um, but I don't know if you had an experience in, in New York at that time or were following it. I did not, so I don't know. Uh, I think that the uh, more recent experience, the most recent experience one is, is the one that uh, Bob referred to earlier. Kathy, did you? Um, I just, uh, Andy, Bob had mentioned earlier this Tufts uh, projection and we can send it to you. They did a very simple modeling like you just suggested on Massachusetts tracks, what happens to national GDP and when GDP goes down, this is what happens to revenues. And then they put a bunch of caveats on it. They looked at 2008, um, both on how much of a rainy day fund does the state have to not have it uh, completely hit the localities? You know, how much do the localities have? And that year, um, ARA kicked in, as people who remember the um, econ that act. And that actually put more money into state and local governments than what is allocated right now on the two trillion of in terms of a share. So I think we the what is the federal government going to do? How much money does the state have? And then um, Paul will talk a little bit about Amherst. We're probably in a better place in terms of our own savings than we were in 2008, you know, like what helps you weather a storm if there's a storm? So each of those became question marks on how similar or dissimilar are we on the length of time and how quickly this is going to hit and how much can we grow out of it if we do stimulus quickly, you know, to counteract what's happening. Andy? Yes, Paul. Oh. 
So, you know, I think I mentioned either in my town manager report or last night, the Tufts study that actually uh, mirrors pretty closely the Mass Taxpayers Foundation study. They're, they're both in the same ballpark. Um, and that's why with those two studies out there, it was the hearing from the Ways and Means chairs and the a and direct uh, secretary today was going to be so important because they're the ones that should have the biggest insight into where we're headed financially um, in terms of a state. And anything the state does, you know, um, I've said this last night too, is like when the state gets a cold, cities and towns get pneumonia, it really floats down to us. Um, and so I think that we are, I think Kathy's right, we do have reserves, uh, but that's not the only tool that we have. We also have uh, to look at all of our tools. I think we're not gonna know for a while, Bob. I mean, it's, there's so much uncertainty and we don't know what the markets are going to do. Uh, we don't know how much the state, you know, we don't know the posture the state will take, whether they will be sort of uh, clawing back all discretionary funding for all their um, projects that are out there, or if they're going to say, we got to be pouring money into the state, uh, you know, clawing back the money to fill the big hole they have behind them, or if they're going to be trying to pump money into the state to, to pump the economy going. So we're looking at it both ways, trying to have things that are shovel ready. Um, so if money is available, we want to be ready to go, um, but also recognizing that they might be taking all of their, you know, the grants that we have, have out there, just taking them off the table and putting them back into their own reserves. So there's so many uncertainties, so, so we can spend a lot of time speculating, but until we have a little more clarity, I don't know how wise it is. I think what we can be doing are, is some scenario planning, like what if, what if, what if, and then start to look at what that does to our budget. I think that's very helpful. Um, it sort of is what, pro, um, when I did the budget outline that I sent to the committee um, and, uh, of, of issues that I identified, it was really what we need to know. The problem is, is that it didn't really get into the question of when we were going to know the information. Um, and it's hard to develop budgets and to do planning without it. There's numerous pieces that um, come into play. Um, as we try and figure this out, including what we're going to do about capital, both capital for next year and sort of the longer term capital issues that we've been discussing for so much, so long, and now we're facing a crisis and uh, having to rethink the whole thing that we've, we've developed. But uh, we, uh, we're just going to have to go through and try and track that out um, and come up with an orderly process that allows us to work with uh, Paul and Sonia and other staff in finance to get to where we um, need to be sizing up what the money is, what the needs is, what our, um, what, what, what our uh, choices are and uh, be prepared to make the decisions, but we know we have a, uh, a, a sequence that we have to, to get through to get to an end result. The other thing that we uh, know is that the timeline has a little bit more flexibility than we think about because we don't really need to have a budget by June 30th. We could go on to um, Ex, uh, one month budgets for up to three months in order to buy us some additional time if that becomes a wise choice to make. I don't think it's anything we'd like to do, but we at least we have it is another tool. Uh, so any thoughts about how we go forward with a with the budget process itself, would um, you like to just have um, us continue to have me work with with Paul and other staff and come up with an outline of a more detailed process and then present it back to the committee for further discussion? So it seemed like the best process. You want us to nod our heads? <laughs> I saw a couple head nods there. Uh, okay, that's very helpful. 
because I think that that's where we will go. Um, there are some hands up, Andy. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sharon. Sharon Pavanelli, do you have your hand up? Uh, okay, yeah. she. No, I, I, can you hear me? Yes. I was trying to do a thumbs up, but there's only a, a raised hand. Okay. Sometimes uh, there's a thumbs up as well, so. Okay, I'm going to try to do one, one last chair if it'll work this time. Let's see if I can get it. Um, Great dog picture. So we have a beautiful dog. <laughs> hmm? We see your dog. That's strange. Is that not what I have on my screen. Now we have budget issues outline. That sounds like better. Uh, so this is the document that I was talking about <clears throat> before. And I uh, didn't know if the committee, would, this had been sent to you, has had a chance to look at it, if there's anything that you would add to this outline. Um, I, did, I did the original development, but I haven't had a chance to share it with the committee yet. And um, I, I have, are there things, if there are things now um, that you know of that you would like to add to the outline, um, this would be a good time to speak up and see if we can get this, get it added because it, um, I think I, what I would like to do is uh, make it be a working outline for all of us. Andy, can you scroll down where the outline stops at number two? Yeah. And this this was in your packet. Dorothy has her hand up. Go ahead. I... Um, well, I, I I did read it and I took a few notes. The one note I made was on number three, um, enterprise fund revenues, and um, I know that we were told, um, I guess yesterday, that um, the revenues will go down because the colleges aren't in session. But my question was, are there any savings when the colleges aren't in session in terms of water and sewer? Sonia, do you have an answer for that or? I can, I can address that. No, uh, no, there aren't savings because we the staff remains the same. The uh, processing stays the same. All the fixed costs are there, whether they're, there's a thousand people or a hundred thousand people. I mean, there's some variability in the in the uh, in the cost, but the fixed costs are the fixed costs, and that's what drives that expense. Paul, does that include things like the um, the study that we authorized, the seven hundred eight hundred thousand dollars study, if we decided to postpone that a year uh, as an expense? Well, there there are a lot of things that we could postpone. I think you're going to see a lot of those things as, as options that cities and towns and the state will be looking at as well. Um, it depends what kind of relief the state provides for a lot of the regulatory decisions that they, you know, the, their, their regulatory postures previously. And we should, I'm guessing we'll see some adjustment in that. Um, but I think that, um, you know, there, there's, we've looked at or talked about um, a lot of different things um, that might impact it. So yes, there's a lot of variables as you as you well know. So when you look at the page that's on right now, which is the revenue side of it, let's just it might be easiest to stick with that for a moment. Is now that there's uh, four categories that I put on there. Um, property tax. We know the amount of property taxes. This is a, a, a difficult thing for um, our residents, but property tax doesn't go down. It is it is established, and uh, we um, but we are uh, allowing deferrals on payments, and that was uh, reported last night at the uh, council meeting. 
in legislatures given authority for cities and towns to do that. And um, uh, the Paul as town managers made the decision that uh, we would do that here in Amherst. Um, that uh, changes the time of collection, but the money is still due, the taxes are still due. And uh, one of the benefits of having the reserves that we have is that we don't have to worry about having a cash, cash flow problem because we always, we have the cash available. Uh, but uh, the, the one piece of property taxes that I am, I am nervous about, and I think you mentioned it some last night, was the new growth estimates. Because uh, there's always, we build in some estimate of new growth estimates each year, which is the one place above two and a half percent that we get increases beyond the, uh, to, without going to an override, um, and uh, so the new growth estimate is something that's going to have to be um, uh, re redone. And I, get, I think our assessor is going to help us with that. So the second grouping is the state aid, which we've been talking about some. And I think that there's not a lot that I can add to that. The other local revenue, I think that we do have to be nervous about that aspect of it. It is sort of the third piece, but it's not an insignificant piece. Meals and lodging tax, I think, is going to be significantly decreased for a while. Um, certainly it is for this year. And uh, so that's a, both an FY20 and FY21 issue. Uh, car sales are way off, and that's where it affects the excise tax because we collect the most excise tax in the first couple of years when cars have the highest value. Uh, building activity and the fees that come in with building activity. Uh, I think we're assuming that it's an area of concern. Uh, the extent of the concern, I don't know that we have an estimate for at this point and whether there's going to be problems and payments from other sources. I think that that's another area that we just don't know yet. Um, but uh, and then the enterprise funds, it's a different piece because there, it's not the general operating budgets, but the enterprise fund budgets, but we've already talked about that. So are there any other questions about the, um, about the revenues? page. Because if not, then I'll go on to the spend. Bob has a question. Oh, Bob? Yeah, I just wonder if we want to just put a, a line in there for anything that's directly from the federal government, not that we necessarily know about that right now. If there are, you know, direct um, grants to uh, local governments or other, you know, SBA loan type things that, that might happen? Um, I can, we can add that under other local revenue. That's probably a, um, a good thing to, to add. And I will make a note of that rather than try and do it on the screen as we speak. Uh, but uh, the federal grants that we receive, um, are most of them in public safety right now? I believe I've known Sonia's not. Most of them are in the school. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. Finally. Yeah, most of them, a lot of federal grants are in school, CDBG and some in public safety. But um, normally when you get money from the federal government, it goes through the state and it's part of our state income. So it would be there. Otherwise it's reimbursements for money that we have spent during the emergency. So it wouldn't go in here. 
So you may have seen some communities are entitled under community, community development block grant. Some communities are entitlement communities. We are, Northampton is, Amherst is not. We are a mini entitlement community. So our funds flow through the state. So the state gets the money from the federal government and then they have to come up with a process to distribute it to their uh, mini entitlement communities and uh, like, like us. So uh, it's federal money, but it flows through the state as Sonia said. Rofi has a question. Yes, um, when you said that um, in terms of property tax and we've given deferments and you said the reserves were a help, I don't remember whether, whether these are general reserves or whether there are special reserves connected to property tax. It's just our general reserves. It would be free cash and stabilization fund. It's a matter of uh, allowing us to continue to uh, operate because if we use free cash uh, to make up for late payments, we've had a very um, successful collection rate, very good collection rate. We have good taxpayers who care a lot about the town and support what we do. Um, but people are going to have to make difficult decisions right now for their own personal lives. I think that's what we're recognizing, that uh, it could be the delay. Anything else on uh, revenue, or I'm gonna go on to just talk about the issues and spending, because uh, I don't see, it. well, hold Roth and regional schools. Um, Mary Lou has a question. Yeah, Mary Lou. Delays in paying various taxes that also impacts any interest we make on that money. So I was wondering uh, if Paul could give us an idea of how much we might have to take out of the reserves. Um, and if that's a significant amount, would it be wise now to ask all departments to look about, to look at their budgets to see how much they could reduce them by? Multiple questions. So, uh, interest rates are abysmally low, so the time value of money is not very significant to us. Uh, cash flow wise, uh, we are in, we're in good shape um, because we're, because we have a pretty good collection rate and our, our reserves are, are strong. Um, we are looking at all things on the table is what we've been telling um, department heads. So um, until we get a better sense of where we are, Again, it's the fine line between keeping the economy going and keeping our budget balanced. So I think it's just a little premature at that moment in time. And in addition, we will be walk, uh, working closely with the school department because they are such a significant portion of our budget. Uh, that's a, a conversation that the finance people and the superintendent will have with our finance people and me. So I'll point out on that as we're getting into on the spending side um, for FY21, the municipal department, what we're gonna have to do is figure out whether we need a new guideline amount and what that guideline amount is gonna be and if this can reduce the amount that we tell um, each of the segments of government, the library, the elementary schools and the municipal departments uh, that is going to be available for expenditure in FY21. I don't think we know the answer to that until we know what our revenue choices are. And then as uh, we made the comment earlier about the state's gonna have to make a decision as to how much of its rainy day fund uh, it wants to use. You know, we've, had, we've collected reserves and used reserves for two different purposes. One is uh, to treat it as um, a, local rainy day fund, which is how it was used in 2008-2009 period. Um, and the other is we had built up reserves with the idea that it was going to help us in figuring out how to fund the uh, major building projects that we've been talking about. I think so that's going to be uh, one of these difficult questions we're going to have to confront as we 
go through the we need to look to reserves as a um, to, to supplement our operating budgets in FY21? If so, by how much? What's gonna be the ramification of doing that? Uh, and then the other thing, and I'll stop talking to see if, what other people have to say, is that we have to get it and make a decision about whether we stay with 10% of the property tax revenue for capital or whether we have to go back to what we did in the 2008 and subsequent year period and reduce that amount. Uh, there are long-term consequences um, when you start putting off capital because eventually all those needs don't go away. They just get worse. So comments? I don't think I have much else to add on that. Kathy has a hand Page. up. Okay, Kathy. I just um, just on the capital and ten percent. Um, so people know we postponed the first meeting of we postponed the next meeting. It wouldn't be the first meeting of JCPC because of the level of uncertainty on what's total property tax revenue going to be and is 10% the right number. But I was looking at the projections, the, the, the debt service that we're carrying in FY21 under capital is a clear number. And so it's, it's going to be uh, whatever other number we come up, we've got slightly under $2 million based on what Sonia and Paul have been giving us in debt service. So, you know, at some point we'll have, at least a grapple of on the capital side, what do we have to spend? Um, and then what else can we spend would be the second piece. Um, so it's the level of uncertainty when you get down to capital is like, if we don't know what the total is, you certainly don't know what 10% is and you don't know whether you can even do 10% of the lower amount. So all of those are contingent. So we're not scheduled to meet until at the earliest, the third week in April, till we get to finance and Paul and everyone get a better grasp on the total budget and projections. Hey. Let me know if hands go up because I'm still, I have too many things on my screen as I think what the problem is. Um, I'll do that. So let me know if there are any other hands up. The, uh, I mean, the other thing that uh, comes out of this is because our policy says that capital is measured as a percentage of property tax. And if the property tax, since the property tax revenue doesn't go down for the reason that I previously said, while other components of the budget are going down, um, that's why you have to start looking at that 10% figure because 10% was put on um, the one piece of the budget that goes up 2.5% each year without us doing anything unless we decide not to tax to the full amount loud. And uh, the, uh, it's the um, other parts of the budget that we're most nervous about right now and we need to do the evaluation and that's why that 10% becomes so important. Um, and I put the issues up to deal with the regional schools, but I think that we've pretty well discussed that earlier. And uh, then there was the question that I put in for uh, enterprise funds. And I think, and Paul had an answer to Kathy's question on that. So uh, if you have additional suggestions on this uh, outline, please let me know. I'm going to use it and continue to use it, but uh, try and make it into um, a group uh, document so that we use it to identify uh, what our choices are. Um, 
So going back to the agenda, uh, I think that that is the, the major things that we need to deal with right now is uh, the, we, we've talked about trying to get um, a budget calendar put together. And I think the other thing we'll say on that is that the budget coordinating group will be meeting sometime later in this month and help us to think that through and to assure that we have proper coordination with the schools and the library. And uh, is there, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanna to ask today. Is there other information that anybody can think of that would be helpful to have to make the decisions that we need about timetable and budget? Uh, I would just suggest patience. <laughs> yeah. We're all going to need that. And, and the ability to deal with ambiguity. Okay. Um, has a hand. Yeah, Paul, uh, can you give us a sense of the timeline of when you feel you're going to get enough information to start, you know, making decisions or start, you know, making plans? Well, we're making plans now, but uh, I think that, you know, what the state is, by the, t the action the state has taken and by allowing towns and communities to adopt 112 budgets, they think it's going to be well into, you know, June, July, August, um, before there's any kind of clarity on any of this stuff. So if we go through a cycle of trying to come up with a better understanding of what our revenue is, and then how we're gonna allocate that revenue amongst the categories, including capital, uh, and then ask uh, Paul to, at that point, be ready to submit a budget to us, uh, we really could likely be into the summer, I would expect we'll be into the summer, to have the kind of meetings that we expected to have in May. Kathy and Dorothy have a uh, hands up. Okay. Kathy. Um, you know, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, a couple, I've heard from a couple corporations, so REA is one of them, on uh, what they're doing looking forward on their revenue. And um, they're for top level people and maybe for more thinking of to avoid layoffs, they're doing wage freezes, but keeping um, benefits intact. So keeping the employer contribution to benefits intact. Do we have any flexibility like that? So for the unionized employees versus the non-union, if 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 the town and say you wanted to do it for June, July, and August, you know, rather than a couple of them were saying for three months rather than for a year, does a municipal do we have that um, ability if we had to use it? There are a lot of different tools out there. Um, there, you know, even in a situation like this, you, there's even negotiations with unions. So I think, you know, I'm not going to go down any individual path on this, but I think there's a lot of tools that we have available to us. I think Dorothy was next. Uh, my question is to yeah, Paul. Um, are there areas where we're spending or are going to spend a lot more than we had budgeted to spend? I think that might be more with Sonia. Um, at this point, I think we don't, you know, we don't have our uh, March numbers really processed yet. We will have a bit more about that. Um, Sonia? Well, um, the, we're going to be working on the quarterly report next week to get that out to everybody um, through March. And you're not going to see much of a difference. It's not really affecting the third quarter. You're going to see that affect more in the um, fourth quarter as far as, as expending. They're spending more for COVID related items. However, all the regular operations have, haven't been spent. So it's, I think it's kind of um, 
zeroing out, netting out that way. So we're watching. We're not spending any. We're not spending any money on any projects of regular operations that we normally have. So yeah. there'll be savings that way. So I mean, we we are buying more PPE. Obviously, anything we can get our hands on, we are. We've hired five firefighters to put on force from the student force, so they're working. So that's an added expense as well. Um, but yeah. Sharon, did you have a question? You had your hand up. Not hearing anything? No other. No other so questions. I have one other issue for the committee, but I want to make sure that we get all of the questions out about either the process or budget information that you would like to have to help you do the work as we go forward. The other issue that I want to make sure that we touch on is the sixth agenda item. And that is that we had talked about our role as the audit committee and uh, starting an audit process of choosing a new audit firm. Uh, and that discussion happened sort of before all of this crisis came up. Uh, and the question is uh, that we're gonna have to confront at some point uh, is whether it is uh, important enough to do that process and go forward with it, or whether we should um, just uh, not try and go out for bid for uh, the, not this coming year, but the year after, uh, in order to preserve the time of our staff and our committee um, over the next months to concentrate on just getting us through the, the current budget problem. Um, the disadvantage of this is that we really have been talking about it for a while. Pat, you have your hand up. I do see it. Um, uh, I feel like waiting is for another year to get ourselves through this is a good idea. And I, I do that because the audit um, group now, Melanson Heath, is very good at shifting who comes in to look at us and what departments they look at. So I feel like we could slide for another year without negative impact. Others? Well, Glenn has a hand. Hi. Um, yeah, I actually agree with Pat. And in addition to that, I think I'd rather not kind of upset yet another business at this point, but then be steady with us. And in addition to that, um, knowing our books and then how we proceed through all of this is going to be important versus somebody coming in in the middle of chaos and trying to break them in. I know the hesitancy from Andy's point is um, that he, she, he um, is very concerned that, you know, the council would have never then changed auditors. I just don't feel like that's a big deal right now. Do you want to make a motion for the finance committee that sure. we recommend to the council and then just uh, put it out there for the council that uh, we've that under the circumstances that we not do a process? Uh, okay, I move that the finance committee recommend to the full town council that we continue with our present auditor, not only through this year, but through the next year. Second. Our second. The Angelus seconds. Okay, there's been a motion that's made and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion in particular, anything that would like to be offered by the uh, members of the committee who will not then be voting? Bob has a hand up. Bob? Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I think that's the the common sense thing to do right now. Anything else? 
because I am going to have to take a roll call vote. There's a requirement that any votes that we take. Mary Lou, did you have uh, she has something? A hand, she has a hand up. I, I support the, uh, the motion. Okay. And share um, a thumbs up, Andy. Okay. Well, thank you. So um, I'm going to take a vote on the motion that's on the floor. And um, Kathy? Yes. Dorothy? Yes. Pat? Yes. Lynn? Yes. And I'm voting yes, so it's unanimous. Five to zero. And um, the minutes can reflect that we did uh, have endorsement from all three members of the committee who were unable to vote because of the voting rules. Um, so I think that we probably covered as much as we've done. It's, it was, I realized somewhat of a disjointed meeting, but it's helpful. Um, I will um, add that one piece to the packet from Tufts University. Um, I will make that one addition to the outline and keep the outline going as a uh, document that's a working document for the committee um, and try and get it um, shared to the committee on a regular basis as a working document. And I'm going to take it, um, treat it as a committee um, outline now and not uh, my outline alone. Um, we will um, start working on a budget calendar for um, as, as we get information. Um, and uh, I think that and, uh, with the BCG meeting once scheduled uh, and then report back, uh, I'm not going to try and schedule another finance committee meeting right now because I want to make sure that we have um, all of the information at hand to use our time well and see if we can start getting some better revenue estimates into the picture. Um, so, and uh, I think that pretty well covers it. Are there other comments from members of the committee? Andy, the only one I might make is Paul had given us that link to the state uh, uh, meeting that didn't happen today. Um, so it might be good as you as chair, if that is rescheduled to send it out to everyone on the finance committee who wants to um, tune in to that because it's a round table with addressing what Bob was talking about, what whatever projections, whatever best guesses we can be making. Um, and it wasn't a participatory, we were just gonna be watching a live video and then it turned out even the participants couldn't be on the video. They just had a technical, total technical failure. <laughs> so, but, but I just think that link for everyone would be a useful thing to have um, if people want to uh, tune into that. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, I've done my best and, I, and that was a failure because, um, but it was actually not much time in, involved. I think we found out about the meeting yesterday. Um, it was sent as a, something to the council. And uh, so I want to uh, assure uh, Mary Lou and Bob and Sharon that I'm doing my best every time I spot something that's getting to the council that seems relevant to the committee to make sure that even though it gets re it's a repeated thing for committee members, that it gets to your attention. Uh, because uh, otherwise you can't be full participants in the committee. And uh, when, we, when that is rescheduled, uh, thank you, Kathy, I will do my best. To get Mary Lou that. has a comment and then Dorothy. Mary Lou. Um, Paul and Sonia, uh, at the point they get the format for our finance committee meetings where we look at the whole budget, if we could have uh, the outline or know about that format before those meetings begin so that we have an idea where we're going. I think it would be very helpful to know what that is going to be. Um, what were you think? Uh, can you be a little bit more explicit about what meetings here? These were the ones that were to come in May, but I guess they're going to be later. 
but there, because I had suggested that we meet with departments for an hour, and Paul said that he and Sonia were working on a format for those meetings. And, and I guess I would like to know what that is before those meetings start. Um, there was a plan, and you would have been receiving it around now, for what was scheduled for each of the dates that were anticipated for May. Had we gone through a normal process um, and had nothing happened, we would be receiving the town manager's budget on May 1st. And uh, then we would have been engaging in those meetings immediately thereafter. And uh, I think that the, the, the plan was to get that schedule out so that we would actually see what was planned for each of the meetings for that period of uh, uh, time and uh, uh, for, for that sequence of meetings. And, but as uh, indicated, if the town manager's budget is not going to be provided until the end of June, it'll be July before we have those meetings. And right. we Dorothy has her hand. Format. Just a quick, quick a question. I had written down, but it may not be accurate at all, um, some finance meetings. I did not have one for the 14th, but I did have one for the 21st and the 28th. Is that just me anticipating or are those meetings? I think that we had put those in originally. Um, we're going to have to reassess them because they may, it may be premature to have that, that, those number of meetings. We were trying to make sure that we um, had time to deal with uh, all of the issues that we saw coming forward prior to May 1st, including the regional schools, which would, uh, we would be dealing with right now um, had we been on a normal schedule. But there's nothing normal going on in scheduling. So I will have to just keep you informed. Thank you. So I want to thank everybody. Unless there's anything else, I have nothing else to add. And I know this has been a difficult and, uh, meeting, but uh, I hope that it's been helpful to get everybody re-engaged and at least beginning to think about what we have ahead of us because uh, this committee is going to be a very important committee for this community. And I look forward to everyone's participation in trying to help us get through this very difficult budget period for the town uh, with hopes that it turns out to be not as difficult as uh, we fear. Andy, I just want to thank you because I know behind the scenes you've been intensely paying attention, but also intensely worrying on behalf of all of us. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. It, it is my nature. What can I say? Okay. So uh, I want to uh, thank Sean. I want to thank uh, Amherst Media. And I want to thank Athena and Sonia and Paul. You've all been great help to the committee. Thank you. So with that, I think we'll call the quits and uh, I'll adjourn the meeting. And uh,